Let's talk about Mixon. Alright, we found ourselves back in IntelliJ once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at Mixon. Now, this is a fairly extensive topic, and you could probably make a six-hour tutorial out of it. However, we're going to just make a, you know, short little introduction here. And there are a few disclaimers I want to basically give beforehand that are actually very important. Number one, if you've just been following along, sort of copying over some stuff and not really understanding a lot of the Java behind it, that's of course totally fine. However, now we're starting to get into something that when you don't have at least sort of intermediate, maybe a little less beginner to intermediate level of Java, then you're going to be very lost very fast because Mixon is a, well, it's thought of as a very complex and complicated topic, very extensive. However, it's, it's not actually that crazy but you do need some fundamental like Java knowledge. Otherwise, you're going to be completely lost. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to go into detail exactly how Mixon work, but I'm going to basically show you well how you can use it. The general idea of Mixon is that you can change certain classes in the, for example, Minecraft code base. So the example we're going to do is sort of a two-parter. So in this video, we're going to make the Mixon part. And in the next video, we're going to make some custom commands working with this Mixon that we're going to create uh, basically in this tutorial. The idea is that we're going to change the entity class to add some NBT data to it. Well, this is a good application. You're going to basically see how we can inject certain code into a method that is already existing. So if I'm going to press the shift key twice right here, so I'm going to press the shift key twice, I'm going to search for the entity class, include non-project items, of course, right here. So you can see, you know, the entity class just normally has some fields here, as you can see, you know, some of them static, some of them non-static. And the idea is that I want to basically add a new non-static field to it. Usually this wouldn't work, right? This only works with Mixon, because Mixon sort of changes the bytecode of the actual class. Like I said, we don't need to worry about what this like necessarily means uh, overall. However, it is kind of interesting. The general idea is that I can just basically change stuff. I can add stuff in here because you can see this file is read only. But with Mixins, I can basically change it. Very important in Mixins as well as also that you do, you know, use it with some respect. Because in theory, you could literally change everything in the Minecraft source code. However, you should not. So this is one thing where it's like, beware of the, basically the power that, you know, comes with this. Like, great power comes with great responsibility. And it's like, so Mixon, don't do everything with Mixon. Be like, oh, I'm just going to change this. You know, oh no, the way that I should do it is way too hard. Let's just do it with Mixon. Basically be cautious and aware when using it to not overuse it. That's the general idea. For some more information, I can highly suggest the GitHub repository and the wiki from a sponge powered Mixon right here. We have a great introduction series. I can highly recommend taking a look at this, especially if you want to, well, understand a little bit more about it. So this understanding the Mixon architecture, it's an absolutely great article on this. It basically explains exactly, basically what is going on, how to do it, how you can then use the, uh, basically extend something, implement a certain interface, and then basically casting this to an interface so that you can then use the method. It's absolutely beautiful. I, I really like this. You're going to have to take some time to basically go through this because it is, like I said, quite a complex topic if you really want to get deep into it. But for just one example, I think we're going to be fine. So let's actually switch over and let's think about this. So what do we want? Well, we want in our Mixon package, right click new Java class called the mod entity data saver. Now, this is just the name that I've given it. You can basically call it whatever you want. So there is actually a little bit of a, an entity too much. Entity data saver. There you go. Now, how do we, well, how do we mix, right? How do we change this? Because, of course, we wanted to change the entity class right here. This class right here that we wanted to change. How do we change this? Well, above the class, we can now say add mixin, you know, autocomplete with the tab key. And then inside of it, we're going to write entity, making sure that we choose a net Minecraft entity, this guy and then dot class. So this is what we have to add in here. And then everything that we write inside of our Mixon class here is basically going to be added in some capacity to the entity class right here. So that's very interesting. Then what we want is basically the first thing. We're going to say a private NBT compound, and we're going to call this the persistent data. Now, if I change nothing else, basically, in theory, this field right here would then be added to the entity class. 
right? I have to do one or two more things. I have to basically specify this certain class in the in our mixin JSON. We're going to do that in just a little bit. But in theory, this would already just be added. That's very interesting, isn't it? So this is actually really all that there is to it. Now, when we're injecting in just a moment, we're going to inject a few pieces of code into certain methods that already exist because otherwise, you know, our M MBT compound is not really going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, going to copy over the first method that we're going to have, and that is going to be the inject write method. Now I will explain piece by piece what is going on here. So you can see that this inject write method, uh, this is just the name. You can basically choose any name. And this is going to inject into the write NBT method that is present in the entity class. So if we're going to go into the entity class, we can actually search with control F for the write NBT method right here. And you can see that as a parameter, it takes in an NBT compound. And then it does a lot of stuff. The general idea is that the write NBT and the read NBT method, so those two are basically responsible for, well, basically reading and writing the NBT when an entity is saved. So when we are closing the world, then some NBT data of those entities are saved, right? Obviously, we need to save the position of the entity, you know, whether or not it's on fire, all of those things, we actually have to make sure that we save. And then we, of course, also have to read that once we're basically in the world again. So that's the general idea. Why do we need this? Well, those are the two methods that are called when we save the NBT data for this entity and when we write the NBT data. We are basically injecting this part right here at the very top. So when we say add head, this means that we're basically injecting it at the very top of the class or of the method, sorry. We're going to basically put it right at the beginning. You know, before this try is even started, we're going to put this if statement here. We're just going to say, you know, if the persistent data is not null, then we please want to also save this MBT data in this compound that we're passing in via the parameter. So this compound here and this compound here is actually the same thing. We have to also put in a callback info returnable. This is there because the method returns an NPT compound and maybe we would want to use this. In our case, we actually don't want to use this, so we're going to be fine. Yeah, this is basically one example of the inject here. And then there's another inject that we want in the read NBT method, of course. So I'm going to copy this over as well. All of the code is, of course, available to you in the description below, GitHub repository, and individual gist as well. And you can see that here we have the inject read method, which injects into the read NBT method once again at the head. So at the very top here. So once again, probably before the try statement here, basically, we're going to say, hey, if this NBT, so this parameter, contains my tutorial mod countm data, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically just set the persistent data to exactly this. That's that's all that there is to it. This is all of the magic in this example here. This is pretty much all that there is to this particular mixin. Now, of course, there are some more things that we actually need. And the two things that we need is uh, we could think about this, right? Or oh, we're just going to take this, right, this class and we're going to use it. That doesn't quite work. What we need to do is we need to basically surround this with an interface. Because one thing that Java can do is in Java, we can cast anything to any interface. And that is exactly what we're going to make use of. So in our util package, we're going to right click new Java class and we're going to change this to an interface. And this is going to be the I entity data saver. And this is actually going to be fairly straightforward. This is just going to have an NBT compound. And we're going to call this the get persistent data. And that's it. That's all that we need. And then in here, instead of just having this a normal class, we're going to implement the I entity data saver. Then of course, when we hover over this implement methods, we have to implement the get persistent data method. I'm just going to move this up here. And we're going to implement this in just a moment. And another thing that we usually want to do is we want to make this class an abstract class, because every mix and class should basically never be used inside of your code. So we shouldn't have any reference to this mod entity data saver. If we want to use this, we always should use the interface right here. So this is once again, something that is explained in the wiki article here, where we basically use an interface, as you can see an interface to uh, change the stuff for a particular class. So that's the general idea. And th then how does this get persistent data look? Well, we're just basically going to say, hey, if this persistent data is equal to null, then what we're going to do is we're just going to set this to new NBT compound. So we're just going to create a new compound. And then we're going to return the data. 
So if the data is not set, we're going to just set it to something new. And if there is something in there, then of course, this is never called. And we're just going to simply return the data. That is all that there is to it. And that is actually all of the mix and class done already. So like I said, there are quite a few bits and pieces. And obviously, depending on how deep you want to go with this, how many things you want to change, what things you want to change, this might get way more complicated than this. However, it is a good, well, first step, let's say, I also can recommend, uh, because this is a very similar uh, topic, basically, than we've done in the last micro version. So in the 117 version, I'm definitely going to link the Mixon video of that as well, because I think that I also go in a little more detail there as well. Highly recommend also checking this out if you're really interested in Mixon. Overall, this is pretty much all that there is to it. Now, there's one more thing which is incredibly important, and that is in your tutorial mod Mixon JSON we have to add our class into this mix right here. So this is incredibly important because if, if you don't do this, then, well, it doesn't work. So we're just going to add the mod entity data saver right here. There you go. Basically making sure that this is also written correctly. So let's just, you know, making sure I'm going to copy this. There you go. Everything written correctly and then everything should be fine. At, in this, you know, at the end of here, we're actually not going to see anything. I'm just going to start the tutorial um, mod once. And we're going to see whether or not we're basically going to see a the Minecraft window. Because then we know that we've done everything correctly. Because Mixon usually, well, they fail uh, quite often. So don't worry about this. If you're really going to you know, try out, out some stuff in there, then you're probably going to have some issues at some point. But no worries. Like I said, basically is what it is. Uh, usually with Mixon, you know, there's going to be some hurdles along the way. Just try out a bunch of stuff. And then hopefully you're basically going to get well to where you want to go. And there you go, Minecraft has started, so everything working totally fine. And like I said, basically the next tutorial in the Fabric series is gonna, well, immediately start after this. We're gonna use this Mixon in the next tutorial. So I highly recommend checking this out as well as soon as it's out. Otherwise, this would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated. And special golden thanks go out to MC Arctic for actually supporting me with the gold block tier. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.